Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In our gospel reading for this evening, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. These are beautiful words of Jesus. Words filled with promise and reassurance that though we live in a world filled with trouble, Jesus has come to give us his peace. And yet, because we live in a world filled with trouble, these words of Jesus for us are often easier said than done. For far too often, our hearts are troubled, and we are very afraid. And it's understandably so. For you look out in the world, and all you see is trouble, whether it's in our nation or in the world as a whole as we hear of conflict or in our nation's capital where it seems like our leaders can't get anything done but are constantly fighting amongst themselves, calling each other names but not getting much done in the way of progress for our country. Or even more locally in our community as we hear of violence, and drug addiction, and other problems. And then even more closer within our homes, as we worry about things such as our job and employment, or our health care, or our medical condition, or maybe it's conflict within the family. All these things leave us feeling troubled and afraid. Those what-if questions start to come to mind. What if I lose my job? What if I lose my health insurance? What if the car breaks down and I don't have money to repair it? What if I can't patch things up with my spouse or with my parents or my siblings and we drift further and further apart? What if? And these questions leave us feeling troubled and afraid, despite the words of Jesus who tells us not to let our hearts be troubled or be afraid, because he has come to give us his peace. And so that's one of the reasons why we have gathered here this evening, to come and receive the peace of Jesus, that peace which passes all understanding. And yet, if you've been a member of a church, whether it's ours or any church for any length of time, you know that the church has its share of troubles and worries too. That no place in this world is immune from difficulty and hardship at times. Take our church for example. I am so pleased, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I am so pleased that we undertook our elevator project. For one, I know I'm biased, but I think I can fairly say that it is beautiful. I've had others from outside our church comment about how nice it looks, how it blends in so well with the rest of our church. But more important than its beauty, which is important, but it works, unlike my microphone. (laughs) It works. The elevator, the main reason we did all this, works, and people are able to come into our church who otherwise might not have been able to. The elevator is a wonderful gift of God given through you and the labors of others for the benefit of the people here and in our community. And for that, I give God and you thanks. 
And yet, the elevator brings with it its own set of worries and troubles, at least potentially, because as we know, the elevator costs a lot of money. And whenever we talk about money, there's the risk of worry and anxiety, especially when you worry about whether you'll have enough. The elevator costs close to a million dollars. And though we were blessed to have more than half of that in reserve here, we still had to borrow the rest. And so now we're beginning the process of having to pay it back. And so with those loan payments bring worry. Will we have enough? What if the elevator doesn't bring all these people that we hope that it does? What if our membership in our church continues to get smaller? What if people leave our church and aren't replaced by others? What if, what if, what if? And yet Jesus calls us to his church to give us his peace. So what is this peace then that Jesus gives to us? Well, it's not a world without conflict. It's not a world without disease. It's not a world without unemployment. There will be a world like that one day, heaven, but we're not there yet. But Jesus says he comes to give us peace now. So what is this peace that he is promising to give us? Well, it's the peace that comes through the forgiveness of our sins. It is the peace that comes from knowing that we have been reconciled to God. It's the peace that comes from knowing that we are children of God and that nothing in all creation can separate us from his love. Jesus knew all about hardship and difficulty and worry when he said these words. For these words, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, Jesus spoke to his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed. At the end of our reading, Jesus says to the disciples, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, Let us go from here. Where is he about to take his disciples? To the Garden of Gethsemane, where he would be betrayed, arrested, and the next day crucified. He was going to the cross to do battle with the ruler of this world, Satan. He was going to the cross to do as the Father had commanded him to save his people from their sins by his death for them on the cross. Jesus went to the cross to give us peace so that we may be reconciled to the Father and have eternal life. And we know this to be true because Jesus who died rose again. The ruler of this world is coming, Jesus says, but he has no claim on me because Jesus died for our sins and on the third day rose again, forever destroying the power of sin, death, and Satan over God's people. And so this is why we can have peace even in the midst of this troubled world because Jesus has come to give us his peace through the forgiveness of our sins, which he gives to us here in this place as imperfect as it may be, as he speaks to us through his word, by which the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, brings to mind all that Jesus has told us, that he will never leave us or forsake us, that he is with us always to the end of the world, that where two or three are gathered in his name, there is he in the midst of them, that he comes to this table, where he gives us his very body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins so that we may have peace. He gathers us here in his church to give us a foretaste of that great feast to come when we will be brought to that place 
where there will be no more worry or anxiety or hardship or pain or disease or death anymore. That place of perfect peace and rest. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, Jesus says. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Though our hearts are troubled at times, and though we are afraid at times, Jesus still comes to give us his peace. His peace that cannot be taken away from us. That peace which we enjoy now, and that we will one day joy forever in the peace and joy of heaven. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.